this year we've been talking about seed. One of the number one principles of learning how to live within the kingdom. So few people understand the power of the seed. Everything you need is in the... I said everything you need is in the... Everything you need is in the... But it's not just in the seed, it's also in the dirt. Every seed of God is supernatural. Every seed of God has life that cannot fail. You know, in this earth's realm, there are seeds that die. There are seeds that mold. There are seeds that do not have capacity. There's something wrong. There's a genetic distortion. But the reality is, in God's kingdom, every seed that he has is absolutely perfect. And God's plan for every seed is not perfect partway producing, but a full production so that there's nothing lacking and nothing missing. You see, God's seeds are perfect in every manner. So the genetic, there are no distortions. It is perfection. So the, the, tra- the, the, the challenge is finding out why it's not working in our lives. Let me say it one more time. If God's seed is perfect, and it's not working in our lives, then why? Perfection can't get any better. So the issue is not God. The issue is where the dirt is. Because unless a corner wheat falls to the ground and dies, it cannot produce fruit. So when we are seeing a distortion of the seed or a lack of productivity of the seed that God has placed in his word for our lives, then we have got to go back and start looking at ourselves and saying, God, where is the distortion in the dirt? Where is the trouble in the dirt? Is it stony? Is it hard? Is it thistle? God, where is the dirt in my life that's not allowing the ground or the seed of heaven to manifest perfection in my heart. You see, this is where you and I get challenged because we don't mind getting saved. Can I hear an amen? How many here want to go to hell? How many here want to go to heaven? So we like the seed of heaven. Can I hear an amen? We like that seed, but there are so many other portions of seed. Can you imagine if God created only one seed and that was corn? Can you imagine eating corn all the time? Where'd my corn go? Well, go get it for me, young man. Can you imagine if God only created one seed? Your lawns would be corn. Your supper would be corn. Your lunch would be corn. Your breakfast would be everything you have in your life would be How long would it take you to get sick and tired of corn? Oh, my goodness. But you see, God didn't create one type of seed. He created a multiplicity of seed, all different types of seed. Why? Because our lives are so unique and so distinct, but yet they have a fabric of university. And that is that when we recognize the universal principles of God's kingdom and we allow those seeds to perpetuate in our lives, then we don't have to sit back and suffer, but we can continue to grow no matter what type of environment we're in. Why? As long as the soil is healthy, the seed that is of perfection, the word of God will always produce 100%. I can't hear you say amen. So here we have, this is important because without understanding the seed, we are going to have a problem. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, it says this, but he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. You see, today you are blessed All across this world, Christianity or the ability to hear the word of God is not always available. You all know that, right? There are many countries that do not allow Bibles. I had a friend of mine who smuggled Bibles into Iran. He said it was very simple. If they got caught, they disappeared. No one ever knew where they went. They were just gone. If you smuggle Bibles into North Korea, you are beheaded. There are many countries in in the world today that do not allow the Bible to be even read. 
But you see, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God is our life. The Word of God is our guide. The Word of God is supernatural. The Bible declares in Psalms 107 that God sent His Word to heal us. Even today, while you're hearing the preaching of God's Word, God can physically heal your body. The, the Bible... He sent his word, the word. Who's the word? Jesus is the word. He became flesh and dwelt among us. He sent his word to heal us. The word heal is rapha, which means everything that you need in your mental capacity, everything you need in your physical body. While the word is being preached, there's a supernatural impartation of the seed of heaven. And he who hears it and understands it, that's the key. Understanding the word, allowing your spirit to be available to not just hear the word, but be a doer of the word. Turn to someone and say, don't be just a hearer. You've got to be a doer. When we understand this, then we've got to start looking at our ground. I've got to be quick, so please understand today is a little abnormal. I'll be looking at my notes to tether myself. The first thing you've got to do when you're going to deal with good ground is you've got to make sure that the ground is soft. Man, there's nothing, I, I just personally, I, I want a cow. One day I'll have a cow. And I want free-range chickens. It's not going to work in big flats, but we're going to work this out somewhere. No, it cannot be in heaven. I just love the smell of cow poop. I really do. I love going by a field when that you know when they just spread it. Oh Jesus! It's it's just it's like a cleansing of the palate. You know what I mean? What a buzz! Did you hear the buzz going on in this place? One of the first things you've got to do to the ground of your heart is you've got to make it soft. The fact is is that there is something called hard heartedness. There are people that have been wounded. There are people that have been uh, abused. There are people that have had bad attitudes, that their hearts have become hardened to God. And the fact is, is that no matter where you've come from, the seed has to always be planted on soft ground. Why? We see it all the time. You go by a field, especially right now in this season. They're turning the fields. Why are they turning the fields? Because they're taking what was on top, what they already cut, they're rolling it in so that it can regenerate itself, and then they're going to go by and they're going to do another field portion that is going to make it soft and it's going to make it supple so that when it's time to plant the seed, it won't have to be shoved down into the ground. Come on now. They've taken the rocks out. I have a hunting place up in Odessa. And man, I drool every time I go into the woods because they have piles of field stones. Piles of them. Why? Because they don't want the rocks in the field. You see, we look at the word of God and we've got to understand that Jesus, when he said this parable, he said it with complete understanding, knowing that it was even going to work today in 2016. You won't go by a farmer's field that he's trying to grow a crop in and see this. Every one of them, they're turning the dirt right now. They're fertilizing the dirt right now. They're making the dirt supple. But yet many times in our walk with God, we allow our hearts to remain hard to the Lord when he asks us to bring change to our lives. I had three amens. I was almost happy. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 says this, I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hardened ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3, and this is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Do not waste your good seed among thorns. See, this is not a new concept. This is what God has been teaching and training, that we've got to make sure our hearts are supple before him. And many of us want God just to a certain extent. You see, we want God as long as he does it our way. We don't want God to get and meddle in our lives with the sins that we want to keep. The stones of our lives... 
that we don't want to give to God. And as long as those stones are in there, it's going to hinder some of the plants. It's going to hinder the perfect seed. It's going to hinder what God has planned for you. What, what, what always amazes me is this, is that so many people grasp for what the world has to offer. And, and when it's time to surrender to Jesus, they say, well, I don't want to give up everything. I want you to know that God will never ask you to give up anything that he won't replace with what God has greatness for you. God does not have goodness. God has greatness. God wants great things for your life. He wants to fulfill your life. He wants you to have peace and love and joy. He wants you to have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. It's not survival becoming a believer. It is living, true living. You see, after you get the land all soft, then you've got to start dealing with water. Was it a few years ago there was uh, such a drought in the Midwest that the crops weren't even able to grow? You've got to have water. You see, this is where so many struggle because, <laughs> listen now, we, we're around the altar today and, and people, you know, Pastor Obi and the rest of the, the team are laying hands on folks and people are going out in the spirit. And some of you are going, <sighs> Pastor Johnson said, we need some tongue talkers here. <sighs> people got a little wild, they're a little excited during worship. Ooh. People are afraid of the Holy Spirit. I can't comprehend it. The world is running to mysticism. They're running to the psychics. They're running to the Reiki masters. They're running to those who, who do supernatural things outside of the kingdom of God. Yet the church, when God starts showing himself in the supernatural, whoa, I'm a little reserved. I don't know about you, but baby, I don't like to swim in ankle deep. I don't want to take a tub where it's only one inch deep. I want to be submerged. I want to be overwhelmed. I want to be overcome. I want God's spirit to be so full inside of me that as it declares, rivers of living water shall flow out of the innermost parts of your belly. I want you to know that the seed of heaven will never grow with earth's water. The seed of heaven can only grow with the water of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have more of the Holy Ghost. We've got to have more of the Holy Spirit. We've got to be filled with the Spirit. We've got to be overwhelmed and overcome. We've got to have him so much that we actually squish when we walk. I want so much of the Holy Spirit that people that come within a 10-foot circumference will say, I don't know what's going on in your life, but something's going on. I want people to be, I want people to be healed by the power in the name of Jesus just by coming in the presence of the Lord. You see, this is what the Holy Spirit has. We cannot regret. We cannot step back. Listen, now, right now, there's a big movement in the church world. They're ashamed of the Holy Spirit. They don't want the Holy Spirit shown in their services. People aren't allowed to raise their hand in worship. People aren't allowed to pray in other tongues. People are not getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, speak with other tongues. People are not being prayed for for miracles and healings. Oh God, if it be your will. We've taken the Holy Spirit out of the kingdom of God. We've, we've not allowed him to be who he is called to be. And I just want you to know who he is. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they are three, yet one. You see, he is not just some power that seems to float around. He is God himself. He is God who's working with us right now on this planet. And if we've ever needed the Holy Ghost before, we've needed him right now. He is the water. You got to get the ground ready. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Spirit working in your life, conviction will be minimal. Has anybody here ever had, you know, we, every once in a while we have it in our house, I'm peeking at the time, where I'll be standing in the shower and the water isn't going down, it's rising. Not good. I blame her hair. Since mine, there is an overwhelming abundance. So here we have the water rising. So what do I got to do? 
That means there's a plug somewhere. There's a hindrance to the flow somewhere. It's not allowed to be free. Water who has the capacity to go through very small portions is now stopped. Without the Holy Spirit working in your life, then your walk with God will stop. So I have to take a plunger and try to plunger whatever is in there. I don't want to know what's in there. I don't want to see it. One time it just wouldn't come out, so I had to go get a snake, and I, I pulled it out, and it scared me because I thought it was moving. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm but this is what's in our lives. You see, without the Holy Spirit, then the seed cannot get the water. And if those ugly, nasty things that cannot be seen because they're deep in the pipes are not pulled out and the water is not allowed to flow freely, then what will happen is you will not be able to water the ground. We need the Holy Ghost more than we've ever needed him before. Turn to someone and say, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody else, I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you got to weed the garden. Can I hear an amen? I hated that part when I was a child. My father used to make me go out and weed the garden. Yes, I know you're watching, and it's true. I didn't like you for that. <laughs> go weed the garden. I don't want to weed the garden. I hated that part. But you see, you have to weed the garden because if you don't weed the garden, then it can be overtaken. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, so that you walk in a manner that is worthy of the Lord, displaying admirable character, moral courage, personal integrity, to fully please God in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing in the knowledge of God with deeper faith, cheap, uh, clearer insight, and a fervor love for his precepts, his principles, his word. You see, we've got to allow the ground not only, not only to become soft, not only to be watered by the Holy Ghost, but we've got to get the weeds out. Remember I said that one sin in your life? Some of you have had that one sin for years. Years and years and years and years and years. You've never dealt with that sin. The Holy Spirit has put his finger on it in your life. It's a weed in your life. And if you continue to let it go, it will destroy or halter or hinder or minimize the perfect seed of God. We don't like to talk about sin in the church these days. There's a philosophy going around that all your sins, past, present, and future, are already forgiven. You don't even need to ask forgiveness. That is a bunch of, that, that is a crock. That is a bunch of baloney. Jesus said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's not cheap grace. Can I hear an amen? It's when there is sin in our lives, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. That's the weed. You've got to allow the weed to be extracted. What will happen when it is not extracted is you will become hard-hearted in that area of your life. That means that seed will die. Listen, we can all act pious, religious, super spiritual. We all got some mess in our life. Turn to someone and say, I know you got mess. We all got stuff in our life that we don't want people to know about that God is working on. Can I hear an amen or oh my? Uh, oh my would have been better. We all got things from our past, whether it's anger, whether it's bitterness, whether it's a sin of sexuality, whether it's a sin. No matter what it is, there's something in our lives that we are not surrendering to the Lord. That is the weed. And what I have great news for you is that will never stop in your life. God is always weeding your garden. No matter how many years you've been saved, the sins, the weeds might not grow as big, but they still hinder as much. Are you out there this morning? God is calling us to be people of abundance. Turn to somebody and say, God loves abundance. Turn to somebody else and say, God's not cheap. We've got God in this little box. People make fun of me. They say, well, you're just a rich preacher. You don't know anything about my life. Be quiet. What I do know about this is, what's wrong with having abundance? You all got a job? Why do you have a job? You want stuff. 
How many want to live in a house? How many want to live in a cardboard box? Thank you. I didn't think so. You act, tried to act real spiritual. Well, I don't. I, I was with a preacher just a few weeks ago, and he looked down, and he was getting ready to receive the offering at the church, and he says, and I don't have a Rolex watch, and I'm not driving a $100,000 car. And I said to myself, well, if anybody was wearing a Rolex or was driving a $100,000 car, they're not giving in the offering. And he needed them to give in the offering. Money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Can I hear an amen or oh my? But abundance is not about money. Abundance is about your life, about peace and about joy, about enjoying yourself. And we're all so diverse. God has made us so unique. That's what I love about the seed that we are. But right now, we're dirt in this story. Here we go. When you take your seed and you put it in the dirt... It's important to know how to do it properly. Now, there's many different ways. They actually have, I'm trying to make them three inches apart, because I want the stalk to grow all the way up and grow big. Three inches enough? Yeah, three inches is enough. I just talked to a farmer. Don't talk to me now. You notice I didn't look your way. I looked the farmer's way. I don't look your way, I look God's way. Ooh, I felt spiritual there. When you take the seed and you put it in the ground, you're planting with understanding. I'm planting corn, so I'm expecting. I'm planting peas, so I expect. But God needs to know and wants you to know that he loves the fact that you break up the fallow ground, that you allow the Holy Spirit to water the seed of heaven, and that you allow the weeding of the Holy Ghost to be there. Now it's time to get the fullness of the seed. Now, I don't know about you. I, I hunt in this place. There's over 100 acres, and uh, there's a spot where it's really hard-packed ground. And no matter what the farmer's done every single year, when I round that corner of the field, the, the, uh, the, corn, the corn plants never get higher than this. But yet, where it's in the middle, and it is well taken care of, man, those are eight footers. I would hate to get lost in the middle of that, in the middle of that cornfield. Anybody been lost in a cornfield before? It's kind of scary. Just had to say that. Smith Wigglesworth said this. It is as we feed on the word of God and meditate on the message it contains that the spirit of God can vitalize that which, was, that which we receive and bring forth through us the word of knowledge that will be as a full power and life as he is. And the spirit of God moved upon holy men of old and gave them these inspired scriptures. You see, the word of God is very simple. And that is that the word in this portion says that some will yield 30, some will yield 60, and some will yield 100. Now, it's good ground. Turn to someone and say, this good ground. It's good ground, but there's still lower production than others. How many of you want the lowest production of seed? How many of you want the highest production of seed? Well, then you've got to do it God's way. You know, there are people that just settle for the lower. I've met a lot of folks that settle for the lower. They don't want to put enough energy into their walk with the Lord. They want to give their heart to Jesus, but they don't want to pray, and they don't want to read the Word every day. They don't want to be consistent to the house of God. They just simply want to go to heaven. And you know, as, valid, as, as, you know, as, as nice as that is, if you were saved to go to heaven, then when you got saved, you die. You're not here just to suck air. You're here because God wants to be a fruit producer through you. God has a purpose for your life. He has people that need your life in them. They, want, they, they need you to plant the seed of the word in their hearts. See, every one of us gets to this place. You see this portion up here? Can you see that real good? There's no water here. So that portion right there, I just put that seed in the corner of the field, and there's no water there. There's no Holy Spirit there. So what's going to happen to that seed? Well, it'll probably take off. 
But it's never going to be to the greatest capacity that God has purposed it for. That seed is genetically planned by heaven to produce. But yet it cannot produce if it's not in the proper form when it is planted. And here we are as believers. We come to the house of God and thank the Lord you're here. Turn to someone and say, I'm so proud that you're in the house of God. But now it's time to understand the word so this mystery of the kingdom can be revealed in your life. We need to have a hundredfold abundance in our life. I love what the word says. The devil's come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life and life more abundant. Can I hear an amen? Amen. He wants to bless you abundantly above all you could even ask or imagine. How is that possible? It's possible only when the seed is allowed to produce the way it was genetically planned. And that means our job is to make sure that the ground is correct. Here's the key. You ready? The key between 30, 60, and 100-fold return is the amount that you're in the word and obeying it. I know you thought I was getting ready to disperse a deep theological revelation from heaven. It is so simple. You see, no one has to talk the seed into growing. If the seed is being watered and being taken care of, If the seed is having the nutrients that are necessary, then I don't need to sit here and coach the seed. The more you're in the word of God, everyone loves Smith Wigglesworth. He raised, I think it was eight or nine people from the dead. Three of them were embalmed. He had a third grade education. He was a plumber by nature. His wife taught him to read by reading the Bible with him. When he got filled with the Holy Ghost, man, the power of God just surged through his life. Listen, I'm not talking uh, philosophy or just a, a thought process. These are proven realities of this man's ministry. So many miracles and signs and wonders, but the key that he had was that he never went 10 minutes with without opening the Bible and reading a verse. Everybody wants his production, but no one wants to take care of the seed. Some of you struggle with your walk with the Lord, man. I'll tell you why. It's very simple. You're never in the Word. You're rarely in church. And you rarely pray unless hell is licking your toes. And you can't understand why you struggle with this thing. I I just don't think it's working for me. The seed always works because it's created to work. God always works. The word always works. Signs and wonders, miracles. God always works. Salvation, everything. God has in his word always works. But the great mystery is this. What's the ground? 